everybody and welcome back to my little side experiment, Sable. So we gotta run and get our bike, our sand cutter really quick and go off to activate our little, I don't know, whatever device that we were handed. I can't even remember off the top of my head. Let's go. Oh, nuts. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're going! I know it's so silly. I'm, I'm, all, I am at my sister's place. So I don't have to be super quiet, but I am trying to not be too loud. Um, also, this thing is loud. Like this machine sounds like it's gonna collapse at any second. Okay, I like that I can like turn with a uh, free cam, and that it doesn't affect the direction I'm going in, so I can get like a full panoramic view. Anyway, I thought this was where. Oh, is that the temple? I, I can press map. Oh my goodness. Clear all markers. Oops, yes, no, clear it. Um, I am over here and I am going, okay, I am going in the right direction. Is there like an Assassin's Creed tower I have to go touch <laughs> to make it so this little area clears out? Uh, I think that is it. That looks very temple-y to me. It also looks very, um, machine-like, uh, or, uh, sorry, um, factory-like. I was just curious if this was, like, maybe a secret entrance. Oh, just a collapsed bridge. <laughs> oh, jeez, this thing. Oh, I hope I get a different bike, or I get to, maybe I get to upgrade this one. Let's see how you do with steps. Oh my gosh, it actually is not... Oh my goodness. It's not too bad. I definitely should have fallen off, though. I think this is the part where I have to get off and climb. I honestly really like this look. Like, it works for it. Like, I think in some instances you definitely be like, the game's unfinished, but I really like... I like this. It's interesting. Um, do I... Like, the visual style is unique, and I think it's cool. Also, I don't know if you guys can hear it over me talking, but the wind sounds super cool, especially the higher we were getting up. Eel! Give me your egg! I feel like I startle it into planting itself. Like it's living a happy little life. And then I'm like, yo, and it's like, oh, and it just like plants itself and pops out an egg. Look at all that stuff over there! Ooh. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, what are you? I also really love the lack of a HUD. I know that that's something some games have been doing lately, like Ghost of Tsushima. Um, and I really, I honestly like that a lot. And I like the way Ghost of Tsushima has like the wind telling you, you know, what direction you need to go. <gasps> Did you see the way I fell? That was actually really scary. <laughs> Just super stiff leg. Okay, so I'm not getting back out that way. They've sent me into a death trap. Hillel sent me into a death trap. I'm gonna die out here. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so excited to explore ancient ruins. I only hope that I can explore and like touch things and like learn things. Um, it doesn't seem like there was really like a codex entry type place. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily need that, but it would be cool to like. Like, I like the mystery and stuff of not knowing everything, but it would be cool to get little blurbs at least, you know? This is obviously in some sort of, maybe an alternate future, or just like a completely different, like, universe or whatever, where space travel is a thing, because there are spaceships that have crashed. And, like, how, like, I don't know, it's just interesting to know, like, where are we at in that timeline, you know? We obviously use technology of some sort. But I really love, and Star Wars does this too, but like a lot of other things too, but where it's like a mix, especially on like the Outer Rim planets, where it's like a mix of like, you know, very like 
sort of like I guess podunk <laughs> sort of like a traditional um very um oh, like not grandiose just like lifestyles kind of mix with like this uh this tech this very futuristic technology you know it's one of my favorites <laughs> and I'm particularly fond of like desert environments mixing like sort of like not really a cyberpunk but like a solar punk maybe I like that a lot Oh, the stone thrums like the beat of a heart as I approach the altar. Um, am I afraid? Exhilarated? I'm exhilarated. I am, personally. <laughs> I am ready for Rohana to know me. I am ready to know myself. I feel her curiosity in this sacred place. I know I'm in her sight. Oh my gosh. This is gonna, this is gonna make me cry. I think just this game at some point is gonna make me cry. I'm in a very sensitive place <laughs> right now. <laughs> A mixture of faith, technology, coming of age, mixture of like mystery, artifacts, like this is just gonna hit me right in all my all my happy buttons. Oh my gosh. Now I've gained the power of flight, and I can fly out of here. <laughs> or we could just float up like that. That's good, too. I've been reading the second book. Like I said, it's sort of the prequel of The Priory and the Orange Tree. I think it's of Fallen Night or something like that. And I just really love the way the world building in that book, and those, both those books, deal with matters of, like, faith and religion and like how certain religions and like ideologies are like formed like the little nugget that forms them and how and we had the same thing in horizon forbidden west which i love is like how oh i do get to fly <laughs> oh nice i didn't i didn't, <laughs> I didn't know but i'm glad but no, just like the intersection of like faith and future, that was one big one in um, with Zoe's story. Like, I don't know. I think I don't think there's nothing wrong with wanting to believe in something bigger than yourself. You know what I mean? Um, and just seeing how people interact with their faiths and belief systems is fascinating. As a person, but I think especially as an archaeo like anthropologist, anthropologically trained archaeologist, how people interact and interpret the world around them is fascinating to me. And it's so fun seeing it in a fictional setting because then it also, like, there's little nuggets of real world always in every fiction. There's always a nugget of of real world something that it's coming from, you know? So, I think this is super cool. I don't have fall damage as far as I know, but at least I have this glide now to help me. I really want to go out and explore, but I'm like, I'm also realizing <laughs> that I need to or I'm, I'm also wanting to not miss out on too much so I'm trying to make sure I click on all the people and stuff oh I can maybe glide now to that girl maybe I'll do that also is that new is that balloon ship thing is that new Oh my gosh, I just hit that rock and it just sent me flying. This looks like a weather tracker. Oh no, it's just a signpost. Does it actually say anything? Dang, if you're gonna have signposts, let me actually see what's going on. Maybe it's just like, ooh, go in this direction and you'll find something. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'm sure it will. If 
if he doesn't give me a new one, I'm gonna be very upset. <laughs> That's okay. Both both me and this little sand cutter need to find our way in the world. Come on. Oh, should I? Am I not? I. This is hello. Yes. Okay. When I return to Hillel, it's clear they know what I just experienced. They're excited on my behalf in a way that makes me miss them before I've even left. Oh my gosh, what a vibe! Like what a mood. Mmm. Yep. Isn't it incredible? How does it feel? Uh, exciting, true freedom. I tell Halal that hovering is exciting and I ramble for a moment about all the things I'll be able to do when I'm out there in the world. Most of it involves me falling in my head and not getting hurt, but I'm sure we'll come up with more in practice. Right, you can do anything you want. Halal's mood doesn't darken, but the sigh they let out is a bit of, holds a bit of sorrow. You're very lucky, you know. I miss it so much, that feeling, just floating on the breeze. But I suppose it's best that fades with age, hmm? Or else I might never have come back from my gliding. I'd just be out there, heaving myself into chasms. What? That's all I want to do. I'll heave myself into chasms for you. I tell Hillel I'll throw myself into a thousand chasms on their behalf, and they giggle. That's what I like to hear. I know people manage to keep it up, but I don't know that I've got the time to practice as much as they do. It takes a really serious focus. Hillel laughs, even if there's a bit of regret in it, and I certainly haven't got that. Still, I suppose the gliding wouldn't mean much if we were all gains and no loss, hmm? I think about that, but I, but I decide there's already too much on my too much loss on my mind to consider it much further. I am saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, and my childhood. To lose the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. You're going to love it out there, Sable, even when you don't. My advice? Try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about ritual and independence and all that out there, but the world's an easier place if you put joy first. Oh, wow. This, this is... This is like... It's pulling on all the heartstrings. <laughs> Just little blurbs. I thank Halal for their advice and for their help, and tell them I'll miss them. It'll be over before you know it. A warning and a reassurance, all in one. I say goodbye to Halal. Before I go, Halal gestures towards the tower. It seems Diza wishes to see me before I leave the clan. Excellent. This really is like a... It'll be over before, you know, before you know it is like... Sort of like that childhood thing too, like you spend your a lot of your childhood wanting to grow up and do other things and do the things that you can only do if you're one year more older, you know, one more year. And keep going up and up and then before you know it, it's, you know, you're an adult and you're trying to figure out what you're doing as an adult and every day you're like, maybe one more year, maybe one more day and I'll know what I'm doing and you never do, but you're just along for the ride. <laughs> Caesar was an outclanner to the Ibexi, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall, and think of her more as a kind of distant relation than any sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given their posts, and by their training and their code, must go to where they are needed, but Caesar has been among us for so long that it's easy to forget it's an assignment first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she's one of us. I think there is a perception among the other clans that the Ibexi are quite insular, or that our designation of Ibexi versus outclanner is just some nervous othering of those who are unlike us. But in practice, such things are more the result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us and who we must leave behind, but all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Cizo did. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. Excited for my bike! <laughs> Cizo has a thirty quality to her voice, and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite a serious person most days, and I am always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. Yes, Jaddy told me how excited you were. Cizo sniffs. She also told me that Driss would be coming along to get your bike together, but I think he may have... I knew it. What? I hadn't meant to say that out loud. I tell her I was just clearing my throat. I don't begrudge Driss for his forgetfulness. Were I tasked with so many odds and ends, I might be just as scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hover bike parts yourself. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that sounds like an adventure. <laughs> I'm going to make my own hover bike. I ask Cizo if I'm expected to make my own hoverbike. No, you are not going to make your hoverbike. You are going to build your own hoverbike. Ooh, of 
what's the difference? <laughs> to, to make suggests you are creating something, but your bike already exists. They simply haven't taken form yet. Oh, a machinist would think like this. That makes sense. Here, take this. Caesar hands me something. A navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful in finding the old parts. I ask Caesar where I might start looking. Our bikes, blah, blah, blah. Our bikes are reborn in the ruined ships and fragments spread apart. A good start would be the ship down near the camp. You'll find another up on that great rock near the other side of the canyon. I hope they put these marks on my freaking map. And another behind that old dam on the hill. Yeah, that is a dam. Interesting. Always interesting to see something like that in a desert environment. Use your navigator to mark that down if you need. You need to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. Do most gliders make their own bikes? I ask Cizo if most gliders really make their own bikes. Only the lucky ones. I tell Cizo I'll see her soon and head off and search the components. Together we will create something new out of the old. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, oh, let, me, let me go. Does it want me to press N? Press N to use the navigator to mark. Oh, oh, I like this actually. Uh, I think she said over here. Something right there. And right there. Perfect. This is, this is, again, it reminds me, I have been playing Breath of the Wild recently, but this reminds me of like the telescope that you have, right? Um, where you can like just like put put points down on whatever you see in the distance, and it's very handy. Um. Okay, so that's oh, okay. That's why that girl went over there. Maybe. How long can I glide? It's my limit on this. Oh, your mask is sweet. Small child, how did you get over here? The balloon was more fun than the person in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I approach the cartographer. Ah, greetings, child. I saw you looking longingly at my great balloon. Quite a piece of work, isn't she? <laughs> eh, she really is. I nod enthusiastically. It really is an impressive vessel. However nervous I get imagining being up there all alone. I wonder if anyone's ever fallen off one. Best not to ask right now. Well, good to meet you. And, oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan. I tell him I'm Sable. Suppose you've come all this way to see me. It's probably a map you're after. Oh, nice. I would love a map. I tell the photographer I'd love a map. Of course you would. That'll be 50 cuts. To my ears, it's a fair price for a map, but too expensive for a pre-gliding glider with empty pockets. I tell Jordan I'll be back. I need to ask Chatty for some money. I do have a little bit of money. Chatty! I can't believe you guys are trying to send me off without a map. Also, I do, I think it's interesting, they're like, oh, like the Hillel was like, you know, it's past my time now to do that. It's kind of maybe like a young adult thing, but I was just thinking of like, and maybe this is like super deep and I'll try to be succinct, but like how life paths don't always take the similar route. Like I, I have not followed a traditional route to success and yet I still feel that I have done well for myself and I'm quite content with the life I have despite not having certain check boxes marked off and like I took a long time to do certain things because I went into it knowing I was going to take my time on like finishing college or something like that you know where like I took a little extra longer to do it you know and I haven't like there's I don't know I just had there's certain things I haven't check marked off the list I'm still kind of living I guess that like youthful air quotes life of just traveling on your own and doing your own thing but I feel like I started doing it at an age where I could really appreciate it more, where it wasn't just like me, a young person gallivanting off to the beaches or whatever. I don't know, like, like that, that romanticized like um, kind of story that I read hundreds of stories like when I was a kid, always wanting to travel, you know, and just thinking I'd get a letter one day and all of a sudden I'd be off on an adventure, you know? But like, I feel like starting it when I was 30 instead of when I was like 20 let me come to a different sort of realization and a different confidence going into it. Um, and I feel like I can appreciate it a little more. Um, so, and it was just interesting thinking that like in this scenario where like apparently typically people don't do the glide, that whatever the floating thing for very long, that's typically part of your gliding coming of age. And once you find out where you settle, like you'll settle. And I've never done that route. I've never picked a place to settle or person to settle with, you know, I've always wanted to just do my own thing 
and glide and throw myself into that. Like literally, like I want to throw myself into these canyons and and these environments and just do my own thing. And I like that they did, that they did. Halal did point out that some people managed to maintain it throughout their whole lives. But like I don't know, it's just interesting a way of like different ways of like approaching success or not even like an end goal of success but like finding contentment with a life you lead for many people it's settling down in one place or like with a particular group that moves around or whatever but potentially for some people in this in the, this is like you know in the game and in the real world but like for some people it's just wandering around on your own finding a few people here and there that you resonate with and then moving on you know i don't know it's just interesting and of all the existential crises i've been having lately this is just interesting which is not even a crisis really just like uh musings apparently this game is really gonna just feed those <laughs> so that's interesting I tell Jaddy that the cartographer wants 50 gods for a map of the era. I try to hedge the way I speak about this, as I'm not entirely sure whether that's too much, not enough, or precisely its value. She tells me not to worry. Here's some money to get you on your journey. Oh, yeah. Use it most wisely, and then a little unwisely when the mood strikes. I really love it. It is good to know the value of money, but you never want to be ruled by it. Holy cow. Whoever wrote this game, like, there are people who write books trying to be, like, at, like f as effervescent not effervescent but like effusent i don't know there's a word i'm trying to think of but like they wax on and on about these things like i often do i am very wordy but like i love these are like it's almost poetic where it's just like everything is very i don't know it's hitting me right in like the, all the heartstrings where it's just like uh and in all the like resonance it's like resonating with me as a person all these little things it's, like, you don't want to be ruled by money, but you want to know the value of it. Like, you don't want to, like, strive to be, like, super wealthy, maybe, you know? You want to be content with what you have, but, like, you also don't want to be, like, not value money and then, like, lose all of it. You know? I don't know. Anyway, I'm the one ugh, waxing too much on and on about it now. <laughs> the game's, like, very succinct on purpose, and I'm like, hmm, yeah, so let me make it longer. I don't know. I'm just... I am just so far, only like what, like not even an hour into this thing and I'm already like, wow, just these little nuggets of wisdom, I guess you could say, are just very meaningful. And I, I want to recognize verbally that I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm really being like affected sort of by, by a lot of it. Give me the stuff. Okay, I don't have to have the E. Greetings, child. Uh, I'll buy that map. And I like that it's like, the like that Jody's not like, you know, now be careful with it. She's like, be careful, but also go a little crazy. Whenever, you, whenever the time is right, you know? Sometimes you just gotta splurge a little. <laughs> uh, confirm. No, kitty. Kitty, you cannot come on my lap right now. I'm busy buying maps. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. <laughs> I am trying. I think put on for the Ewer map and all its vast possibilities. Something about this makes it feel more real. Good luck on your gliding, Sable. I still remember mine. I asked how it was. Sure, I knew since I was a boy that cartography was for me. But I spent a little extra time out there just to enjoy the world. Speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, eh? Plenty of my colleagues out there and they'll have more maps to sell you from Hakao to the Soda Waste. I thank Dodon for the tip and say goodbye. Okay, so so far in the world building, I am perceiving we have machinist and cartographer and I'm really curious if I will be able to pick one of these as like something that I want to do. It does seem like that's the end goal or I can be Ibexy, like just like a nomadic nomadic wanderer. So I've got like three things that I can sort of end up going with, you know? Um, and I'm just going to be like really super excited about that and I wasn't reading any of that. <laughs> Oh, uh, the, 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 I, I didn't read any of that. Something about fast travel? How exciting for me. Oh, buy parts, fishing, clothing, badges, quest, key. Well, let's check the map. Map? Okay, sweet. So here we go. This is such a beautiful map. Oh, undo that. How do I un... How do I undo one scene? Oh, okay. Okay. I don't... Okay. I was like, I'm trying to, like, drag it, but I'm not supposed to click it, apparently. 
is very weird. Ibex camp. I don't know what that is. Maybe that was my eel. What's that noise? That noise is very weird. Okay. So yeah, we've got some setup, right? For like things I can I can eventually choose to become. And I'm really, I love being able to do that, right? Like, you can sort of pick your path in life. And I'm kind of assuming in this game that you could honestly, um, she said there's no wrong path, right? So I will be picking one, but like potentially you can pick others, you know? Uh, where did I, okay. Like you, or you can pick like one and then maybe if you don't like it, you can pick another, I don't know. But, um, if nothing else, you can at least take your time, and seeing as how I sort of gave like a tiny, <laughs> uh, fairly concise for me, um, what is it, like a uh, summary of like my life and how I've kind of lived my life, you can better believe I'll be taking my time and exploring all my options, and, and then when I finally figure out the thing I want to do, I'm going to do it wholeheartedly. I'm very excited. I always like the sci-fi stuff too. I'm just such a big fan. I'm pickier on my sci-fi, I think, than my fantasy, but but I do love sci-fi. E. There's nothing of use to be found on the ship, but I notice a blinking light flashing on the dashboard of the cockpit. Push. A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording. It's barely audible. Stop messing about with those buttons, you absolute idiot. <laughs> Sorry, Ramen. Concentrate. I don't think I have to remind you how much work it was to get this far. We're almost there. Alright, let's see what that old machine has told us holds up. If not, there will be hell to play. I hear the sound of mechanical adjustments being made. Three clicks. Buttons being pressed, perhaps? Okay, when I push this orange thing, pull that lever. Hard. Yes, Ramen. The sound of a click and loud grunt before a snapping sound. Oh, on Rana's mask. Not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly, the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble that gradually increases in pitch. Then the sound of someone cheering. It worked. We're flying. More cheering. Is that the sound of someone dancing? Okay, okay, let's focus. This thing is moving fast, so we need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that, Ramen? Let me check the machinist notes. A long pause, a rumbling static sound that started playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Ramen, that lever, Toma, the one you just ripped out. We're going too fast. We're going to crash. We need to. Ooh, that's sad. It's one of those things are like forever and a very long time ago. People died. Well, that's sad. They were all, like, excited that they were flying, and then they were, like, dead. Um, anyway, there's apparently some buttons I need to press. We look very determined. Oh. I, I think I am. Saima. I am immediately on guard. Saima has always been a bit of mischief maker. She was the one that they were talking about. And taken in tremendous, taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. In theory, I am older, more experienced, and should be more than able to withstand it. In practice, you won't find it here. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never, never. She never fails to get me. You're a horrible child. <laughs> she, Saima laughs off my irritation, but I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I cross my arms and try to effect a change. I'll give you the calibrator. I put out my hand, proud of myself for standing tall before Saima. If you give me some beetles. That's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want. I try to decide if it's more mature to push her over and steal the calibrator or to acquiesce. But then I simple sti simply stifle a sigh and shake her little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in the camp know where I can find some. For me, starting out on my gliding here and trying to be uh, an independent woman, I sure am having to run back and ask the adults for help a lot. It's not bad, though. You always gotta, I don't know, not always gotta. Some people just go. You know, some people just, when life is not kind to some people, they just gotta figure out things on their own. But if you have a nice support base, it's always good. To, to come back and ask for help, and it seems like the adults, as I've so effervescently <laughs> uh, been effusing, I'm, I'm not even using any of those words right, um, but uh, as I've been caterwauling, caterwauling on about, the adults in this game really seem to have their heads on straight and are a lot more succinct than I am. 
oh, this is probably where I'll build it. I was like, this looks like a machine shop of some sort. This is probably where I'll build my little glider. I'm so excited. Um, oh, bye. I dang it. I should probably stop the recording here without breaking this thing. Um, but good to know. Good to know there's more here. But yes, thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, Beagle Detour. Ask around and figure out. How exciting. I'm so excited. So thank you all again for joining me. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Rizcalito, my sapling tier patron, and Adam, my other sapling tier patron. Thank you all so, so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you're watching this, I hope you're enjoying it. And I appreciate it a lot. Um, oh, and an extra special shout out to Christopher, my tree tier patron, who comments all the time. And I love reading your comments. Thank you so, so much. Um, it's one of those things that honestly, when I'm kind of in a slump, I go through and I like to read the comments of people who do enjoy watching my videos whenever I feel like I'm like, no, nobody likes them, even if I'm, it's silly, right? It's silly, but like, you know, it still happens. So I, I appreciate your support with all of that. And anybody else who comments or watches, I just appreciate it a lot. So thank you all so much for joining me and I hope to see you in the next one.